Has ISIL really been defeated in Syria? The US president thinks so. He announces the total withdrawal of American troops. America's allies are critical. And what about Kurdish fighters who helped the US battle ISIL? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Imran Khan. Donald Trump is defending his decision to withdraw US troops from Syria and his announcement that ISIL has been defeated. His tweet surprised just about everyone, both at home, including in the Pentagon and abroad. France is warning that ISIL has not been wiped off the map and the fight needs to continue. Rebel groups fighting ISIL say a US pullout could destabilize the region. Patty Colhane sets up our discussion. It's a massive move that will dramatically change the landscape of the war in Syria, and one not many saw coming. The U.S. president tweeting out that ISIS has been defeated, and that was the only reason U.S. troops were in Syria. We have won against ISIS. We've beaten them, and we've beaten them badly. We've taken back the land, and now it's time for our troops to come back home. But according to the U.S. government, the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant is not actually defeated, a point stressed by the president's own State Department just last week. I think it's fair to say Americans will remain on the ground uh, after the physical defeat of the caliphate until we have the pieces in place to ensure that that defeat is enduring. The move comes after a phone call between President Trump and President Erdogan of Turkey. He's made clear he wants to target the Kurds who have fought beside the U.S. And that is more difficult to do if U.S. troops are in his way. Just a few months ago, the president himself yes, heralded Mr. the sacrifice the Kurds have made. Okay. We're trying to get along very well. We do get along great with the Kurds. We're trying to help them a lot. They fought with us. They died with us. They died. We lost tens of thousands of Kurds died fighting ISIS. Now many worry what will happen to the Kurds. What this message sends is we don't stick with people, our friends. Without the Kurds and the Syrian Democratic Forces, we couldn't have beaten ISIS, we couldn't have taken back Kobani and Raqqa, because we were not willing to commit all of those troops that were necessary. Others say that shouldn't be a concern for the U.S. First time in my lifetime we have a, pre a president with the courage to declare victory and bring the troops home. This came as a surprise for many on Capitol Hill, some senators calling this a big mistake. It's hard to imagine that any president would wake up and make this kind of decision with this little communication, with this little preparation. If this decision is a withdrawal of all of our forces in Syria, now we're dramatically less safe. This is an Obama-like move. Because now that the U.S. has withdrawn or is going to withdraw from Syria, we, we have basically turned the country over to Russia and to an even greater extent, Iran. The administration and the Pentagon both released statements saying the fight against ISIL isn't over, that the U.S. is simply transitioning to the next phase of the campaign. They didn't say what that phase might look like. Patty Colhane, Al Jazeera, Washington. Turkey's president has threatened military action on the border with Syria if U.S.-backed fighters don't leave. Zeynep Khodr is following these developments from the Turkish capital, Ankara. 35% of Syria, in one way or another, is up for grabs. The northeastern enclave, which is under the control of the Kurdish armed group, the YPG. The U.S. decision to withdraw its troops leaves the YPG in a very vulnerable position. Yes, the U.S. had some 2,000 troops militarily. This is insignificant, but it was a deterrent. And just a week ago, Turkey threatened a cross-border operation to end the YPG's um, self-rule in that enclave because it sees this as a national security threat. Now, what will the YPG do? Will it re-engage with Damascus earlier this year? It was in talks with the Syrian government to find some sort of an arrangement. It broke off those talks after the United States convinced them to do that. Now, engaging with Damascus would, in one way or another, stave off the possibility of a cross-border Turkey operation. But Turkey's government repeatedly says that we have no territorial ambitions in Syria. What we want is uh, to get rid of, quote, these terrorists and the Turkish defense minister reiterating that uh, what they call terrorists have been digging trenches and that the Turkish military will bury them in these uh, trenches when the time comes. So Turkey keeping up the pressure, but it will have to coordinate with Russia and Iran, its partners in the Astana process, if it does 
um, engage in any military action inside Syria. This is being seen as a concession to Turkey. It's seen as efforts by the United States to improve, nego uh, improve relations with Turkey to try to pull it away from the Russian and Iranian camp in Syria. Over to our panel in London, Vladimir Van Wilgenberg, a specialist in Kurdish politics. He was in Syria recently. In Washington, D.C., General Mark Kimmett, former Assistant Secretary for Political Military Affairs under President George W. Bush. And in Moscow, Alexei Klebnikov, a Middle East analyst at Russia International Affairs Council. Welcome to you all. I'd like to begin with you, uh, General Mark Kimmett, in D.C. Has the White House simply abandoned the very people that helped it defeat ISIL? No, I don't think so. I, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about what this announcement means. This just says that we're pulling the 2,000 ground troops out of Syria. It will not stop our air support. It will not stop our intelligence support. It does not stop us from training and equipping troops outside of Syria. This is very similar to the strategy that we've used inside of Iraq. The local forces, in that case, Iraqi security forces, have been giving a lot of support by the Americans, but not ground troops. And I think what has been done in Iraq uh, is a justification of this strategy. Those 2,000 troops on the ground truly weren't making a significant difference. In London, uh, Vladimir Van Wilgenberg, you've heard what General Mark Kimmett had to say there. They're not abandoning them. It's just a reshifting of the strategies. Are the Syrian Kurds likely to see it that way? I don't think so, because there's not a real indication if the air support is continuing. Uh, today there's a meeting between the, between the Kurds and the coalition about this issue. And actually the Kurds, they're afraid that uh, in any moment Turkey could attack them. And also they're afraid about uh, the regime and uh, Iran. Uh, so they are now uh, asking the world for more support to let the U.S. troops stay, because the U.S. troops in Syria, they were basically a deterrent for uh, Turkey to attack. And until now, ISIS is not defeated. And if there's no U.S. troops on the ground, it's going to be very difficult to defeat the last uh, fighters of ISIS uh, in Syria. Despite the very strong language that the Turks have used, there is still uh, the Russian involvement in all of this that uh, needs to be uh, discussed as well. Let's bring in uh, Alexei Klebnikov um, in Moscow. Uh, the Russians are still there. Does this mean that the Russians are now the key player and they're the ones that will be able to stop Turkey coming in to or mounting any particular offensive in uh, northeastern Syria? Well, in the first place, we shouldn't uh, rush into conclusions uh, about whether U.S. withdraws completely or it just scales down its military presence. As my colleague in D.C. rightly mentioned, uh, this uh, uh, statement doesn't mean uh, the uh, full end of support to to Kurds. So there are basically several scenarios. The first scenario, if the United States basically uh, just lowers down its uh, military on the ground, uh, leaving special forces, uh, equipment, training, that doesn't uh, change much on the ground, basically. It just appeases to Turkey uh, and U.S. keeps guarding uh, Kurds in the area. The second scenario is basically that, yes, U.S. withdraws from northeast Syria which actually leaves the vacuum for Turkey and Iran to, and even Damascus to try to get those areas under their control, which also exacerbates tensions between Russia and Turkey. And uh, the and third scenario is that Kurds under those circumstances will be more inclined to negotiate with Moscow and Damascus on possible terms of reintegration back into the uh, Syrian state. You're nodding in agreement there, uh, General Mark Kimmer. Why is that? Well, first of all, I think that was a very balanced uh, presentation from my colleague in Russia. Uh, I think what is left unsaid here is this notion that the United States has a significant responsibility to the YPG. The YPG, as testified by our former defense secretary, directly links them to the PKK. Second, when we made this uh, deal with the, with the YPG, it was said that our responsibilities and our assistance was going to be temporary, transactional, and tactical. The president has determined that, that okay. that's exactly where things are right now. We are going to withdraw. ISIS is not an existential threat to the United States of America, so let's be practical. It has been defeated, but has not been destroyed. 
Uh, so let's let somebody else do that work, whether it's the Kurds, whether it's the Turks, whether it's the Russians. Why is it the United States' responsibility to talk about the final destruction of ISIS? Vladimir, the Turkish government has long regarded uh, the YPG as part of the PKK, which it regards as a terrorist organization. They've been at war since the 1980s. Is this the opportunity for Turkey to go in and simply destroy what is a, a US-supported organization, them alongside with the Syrian Democratic Forces? Is this Turkey's reason to now go in because the US has pulled out? Well, uh, Turkey wanted to go in one week ago when I was still in Syria, but the U.S. was then telling Turkey that if you go in, you will not be allowed to go in because we will hit you, because uh, the U.S., they told Turkey that this will undermine the fight against ISIS, and they will not allow uh, Turkey to intervene. But with this new sudden withdrawal uh, and decision of Trump, uh, things are changed, and there was like a policy of the U.S.-led coalition and also by the Syria envoy, Jim Jeffrey, to stay uh, for a certain period in Syria until things cool down, until there's a solution uh, with uh, Damascus in Geneva. Uh, but if the U.S. just pulls out its troops, then the U.S. will lose all its leverage and credibility in the region. It will help Iran. It will help Russia. Uh, so I, I really disagree with uh, my colleague uh, who previously talked here. This is completely undermining the policy of, of the Syria envoy James Jeffrey and also of the U.S.-led coalition. There was no plan to immediately withdraw. It should have been a phased withdrawal, but now it's just a sudden withdrawal without a clear plan. And actually, U.S. soldiers are now afraid what is going to happen. We're underground uh, because who will say that the SF will now fight ISIS? I mean, it's, it's a very dangerous situation for U.S. soldiers in this chaos to withdraw. Uh, from Syria, because they, nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. Turkey could attack, the regime could do something. It's a very, very uh, unclear situation now. But both our guests in Washington, D.C. and in Moscow have said that this is a tactical change, that there will still be support for uh, the Syrian Kurds. It just will take a different shape. Are you still cynical? I'm still cynical uh, because in the past, uh, like under the Syrian envoy and under the coalition, it was quite clear what the policy was, but now there's a sudden withdrawal. So now it's very unclear what's going to happen. Before it was clear, but this decision is made by the US president. It's, it's against the policy of the Pentagon, it's against the policy of the State Department. He's going against all the advice of his advisors, like, for instance, the uh, Defense Secretary. So I think this is, is leading to a lot of instability and chaos in the region. While, for instance, they could have taken two years to have like a phase withdrawal, to reach some sort of accommodation with Turkey, uh, make some administrative changes and reach also a, a peace deal on Syria with Russia and others. But now the uh, U.S. will lose all its leverage and now it's up to Russia and Iran to decide the future of Syria. General Mark Hibbert in Washington, D.C., has President Donald Trump gone against all the advice he's been given? Has he gone against the Pentagon? Is this a decision he simply has taken on himself and with himself? Well, two things. First of all, I would say that I was with the military command uh, last week in Baghdad so I, I, I think that some of the things that our colleague from Moscow may have heard in Syria didn't seem to translate to the senior commanders there. Uh, so let's talk about President Trump. From the day he started on the campaign trail, he said he was going to get Americans out of stupid wars in the Middle East. Now, I don't know if the Syria envoy wasn't listening. I don't know if a succession of diplomats that have been working weren't listening, but the fact remains that the only thing that should be shocking is how quickly the announcement was made and how spontaneously the announcement was made. But if anybody wasn't listening to him consistently say that we were going to pull out uh, of Syria, uh, then I don't think that they were listening. So what I would also say is this notion that the Americans should stay there a couple of more years. Let's be clear, we've been in Syria longer than we fought the Second World War. The military has now come out with a plan to train and equip 40,000 local police. How long would that take? That would take months or years. Then, if there was any final resolution to Syria, it would probably look like the Balkans where a peacekeeping force would be needed. So then the Americans would stay even longer. Uh, listen, the Americans are tired of forever wars. This president is tired of forever wars. There may be some argument among his advisors about the timing and the shape of that withdrawal, but everybody knew that this president intended to pull the troops out of Syria. 
Alexei Klebnikov in Moscow. Um, what is the official Russian position here? What the, how are the Russians going to take advantage of this current situation, do you think? Well, just an hour ago, Vladimir Putin was giving his annual big press conference, and actually, when he was asked uh, a question about the situation, about the U.S. decision to withdraw from Syria, he asked, like, uh, what is that about? Uh, we, so far, we don't see any indications of that. And he uh, gave an example is that the United States um, are present in uh, Afghanistan for already 17 years, and they promised to pull out of Afghanistan every single year, but they're still there. But he didn't exclude the, uh, the chance that uh, Trump will initially uh, implement uh, that decision. That was the, the official. Also, Putin uh, actually agreed with Trump that uh, the United States uh, helped significantly to, uh, to um, basically eliminate uh, ISIS or degrade its capabilities in, in Syria, although not completely defeated, as we still have some pockets uh, of ISIS and Hayat uh, Tahrir al-Sham in uh, northern Syria. Vladimir van Wilgenberg in uh, London. There are still pockets of ISIL fighters within Syria and within Iraq itself, but they're nowhere near the kind of threat that we saw in 2014, 2015. Uh, do you still think that there is a massive level of troops needed and particularly international advisors like the US, 2000 is a lot of troops at that level. Do you still think they're needed to fight those small pockets of fighters that we're being told are still there? Look, Trump is now making the same decision as Obama when he completely pulled out troops of Iraq. A few years later, uh, ISIS created and took one third of Iraq. So if Trump is completely going to withdraw all troops uh, from Syria, and later maybe also the Iraqi parliament will decide to, that uh, US troops will leave, there's a big risk that ISIS can use the fighters they have that they still have now to reorganize and then at some point later in the future take again parts of Syria of Iraq and then again pose a threat to the West and carry out attacks in Washington and London and other areas. I think if you just pull out everything, if you don't take your responsibility in the region, it's going to backfire just like what Obama did. So Trump is doing now exactly what, what Obama did uh, several years ago when he pulled out U.S. troops from Iraq. This is a very significant threat uh, to the world, to the international community. And we should not remember uh, that uh, although ISIS, they lost a lot of territory, they still have thousands of fighters. And this is also confirmed by the Pentagon last summer that still uh, both in, in, in Iraq and also in Syria, they still have several thousand thousands of fighters, and those fighters can reorganize and at some point, uh, again, pose a threat to the West. I'm just going to pick you up on a point there. The Iraqis would completely disagree with you that they needed uh, the Americans right now. Uh, they said that the Americans came in and gave them support, but the actual fighting was done by the Iraqi security forces. It was done by the popular uh, mobilization forces, and it was an Iraqi victory. Well, ISIS in Iraq is not defeated. There are still thousands of ISIS fighters. Um, and I think uh, the Iraqis would not be able to defeat ISIS in Mosul without U.S. air support. Without U.S. air support and U.S. support on the ground, the Iraqis would not be able to defeat ISIS. It was a joint effort. The Iraqis uh, made like a huge fa uh, sacrifice in the fight against Daesh. But without the support of the, uh, of the Americans, the Peshmerga, also the Kurdish forces, and the Iraqi forces would not be able to defeat ISIS in these areas. I was myself in Erbil when ISIS was standing on the door uh, of Erbil, the capital of the Kurdistan region. And without U.S. airstrikes, ISIS would have taken maybe Erbil. They could have also threatened even Baghdad. So I don't think that without U.S. support that the Iraqis could have de defeated, uh, defeated ISIS. General Mark Kibbett in Washington, D.C., what do you think? Without U.S. support, uh, uh, ISIL may well come back. This is what we seem to be hearing. Well, well, first of all, I should have picked up my cell phone and called my colleague because I was in Baghdad at that very time. And I've been working with the Iraqis for many, many years. And my colleague from Moscow is exactly right. The Iraqis are the ones that have done the fighting. The Iraqi military was swept off the battlefield and ran off the battlefield but it was able to be turned around primarily with the help of the militias and the U.S. support. And what I would say is that's exactly what this plan will envision. The United States did not do the fighting. I spent a lot of time with the federal police in uh, Iraq, and they had thousands and thousands of casualties, but they were supported by American airstrikes, American training and equipment, and American intelligence. And that's exactly what we're going to continue to do in Syria. The only difference is that we're pulling 2,000 ground troops out of there, uh, that even, even Ambassador Jeffrey 
didn't understand why they were there. So he was the first one to say these ground troops aren't making that much of a difference. I do not believe that the American policy is to withdraw completely from Syria. I believe the U.S. policy in Syria is the same as the U.S. policy in Iraq. Provide training, intelligence, air support, but let the people on the ground, let the locals do the fighting, not the Americans. Alexei uh, Khlebnikov in Moscow. What's the Russia-U.S. relationship like now? What should it be now that we've had this decision to withdraw certainly ground advisors uh, from uh, northeastern Syria? Well, uh, just as I mentioned uh, an hour ago, Putin actually praised uh, the uh, and expressed his satisfaction with the level of cooperation between Russia and the United States military intelligence uh, security services on on Syria. But I also I wouldn't uh, jump into conclusions that after U.S. withdrawal or uh, even scaling down of their uh, military presence, Russia is happy about that. I wouldn't say so because it also uh, brings certain um, risks and limitations because uh, even this uh, gesture uh, or statement of the uh, U.S. withdrawal from, from Syria, I think it's just uh, as Trump's uh, general policies, he announced a lot of things like withdrawing from different trade deals and basically he's trying to, reneg to renegotiate and uh, ultimately you know, jumping back again. So basically here we can see maybe um, uh, a similar logic that uh, you declare uh, one thing and behind uh, U.S. and Turkey might strike a deal. You also can see that two days ago, United States uh, uh, State Department actually cleared $3.5 billion sell of uh, Patriot missiles to Turkey, actually, which is the sign of uh, Washington's desire to reconcile, to warm up its uh, relations with Turkey. So actually, there is some uh, some games going behind the scene, and uh, we still sh shall see, as I also uh, previously mentioned, we uh, don't know the exact modalities of the withdrawal, the exact parameters. And as my colleague in uh, Washington uh, rightly mentioned, we shouldn't um, overstate this uh, statement uh, and also um, do not underestimate uh, U.S. Uh, presence. Uh, regardless of uh, its even withdrawal of its military units, but its uh, uh, trainers, military advisors, air support, uh, reconnaissance, um, and other uh, things. Uh, gentlemen, we are running out of time, but I do want to ask Vladimir and General Mark Kimmett a question each on the Turkey-US relationships. Just very quickly, I'll begin with you in D.C., General Mark Kimmett. Um, what is the deal that's been struck, do you think, if any, between Turkey and the U.S.? Well, oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm glad my colleague from Moscow mentioned the importance of Turkey. Uh, listen, over the past 15 years, our relationship with Turkey has been in a nosedive. Uh, from the time that Turkey did not allow the Americans to use Turkey to go through for the Iraq war, to the issue with Gulen, to the issue with the coup, to the issue with our support for the YPG. Uh, I think in many ways, President Erdogan convinced President uh, Trump that among everything in his considerations about Syria, he needs to consider about the long-term relationship with Turkey. And that's critical. They are the largest military in Europe and in NATO. They are a valued U.S. Uh, ally in the region in a number of terms. They fought with us for years and years in different conflicts. They hosted U.S. nuclear weapons. And candidly, I think that thinking about the relationship with Turkey far more so than the relationship with other elements inside of this equation, I think in many ways is probably the smartest thing President Trump is doing in this policy. Turkey is important to the United States, and this may be a step to bring it back. Just very quickly, we are running out of time in London. Uh, Vladimir Van Wilgenberg had the U.S. and the Turks got together and uh, sold out the Kurds. It seems going that direction. I mean, uh, my colleague uh, before mentioned that Turkey is a NATO ally. Also, Turkey, they allowed uh, thousands of jihadists to go to Syria. It was the reason that Turkey didn't fight ISIS, that the U.S. decided to work actually with the Kurds against ISIS. So I think this is a very serious threat uh, to the stability to just drop the Kurds and leave them uh, to, to uh, prop open to a possible... Tur I'm afraid uh, we are attack. out of time. Uh, thank you very much to all our guests. Sorry to cut you off there, Vladimir Van Wilgenberg.
General Mark Kimmett and Alexei Klebnikov. And thank you too for watching. You can see the programme again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Imran Khan, and the whole team here, bye for now.